we get the boundary boxes around the objects that we're detecting so right now we're detecting a couch in the background even though we can even see like a small part of the couch it still detects it we can see that we're detecting a chair and also a person hey guys and welcome to a video in this computer vision tutorial in this video here we're going to do live object detection with yolv5 so in one of the previous videos here on the channel we have talked about like how we can create your own custom object detector with yolov 5 and we also implemented a yolov 5 model where we can actually like, just take a youtube url or any other video uh, file and then just pass it into the object detector and then it will detect all the objects that we have in the video but in this video here we're going to do it with a live webcam so we're actually like, just going to connect to the webcam and then we're going to do live object detection with yolov 5 but first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribed to the channel. It's just a single click and it helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also remember the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can help you out in your projects. If you have some problems and so on, I can help you out and give some guidance if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So let's now jump straight into Visual Studio Code and go over the code for implementing this object detection class on a, on a live webcam. So in one of the previous videos, we already went over this class here line by line. So if you want to know more details about like how to implement this class, definitely check th those videos out here on my channel about YOLO v5. So now we're just going to already just load a pre-trained YOLO model. We can also create our own custom object detector with YOLO v5. I have videos about that on the channel, so just search in my name or like on my channel for YOLOV5 videos and you can go in there and get more details. So in this video here, we're just quickly going to go over uh, the lines of the code here. So first of all, we're going to initialize our object detection class. We're going to load our model. So we're going to call a load model function that we're going to create. Then we also get the classes here for the Coco dataset. If we are actually using CUDA, we can run the program here on CUDA if it's available. So again, you can, you can just go into PyTorch website. So first of all here, I'm just going to show you. So you can just go into PyTorch uh, website and into the installation path. Then you can go in here and choose your uh, operating system. You can also choose like the package that you want to install it with. And also like if you want to use Python or C++, you can use your CUDA version here that you have, or if you just want to download it with CPU, then you will just get these commands here. You can go into command prompt and just pass in that command and it will it will just install a PyTorch here on your computer with either the CPU and also the GPU if you are installed CUDA uh, beforehand from NVIDIA. We can also use like here we can see we have this uh, RCM if you actually use um, pip install I think it is or Linux we can use like an AMD, um, AMD graphics card as well. But if you have an NVIDIA graphic card, you can use CUDA here and then you can basically just go in here and install it by copying, copy pasting this command and passing it in into the terminal or your command prompt. So let's just go back to Visual Studio Code here again. So if you have a CUDA available, it would use the GPU to actually like run this inference with the model on or else it will just use the CPU. Then we're going to load the model. So we just go inside torch.hop.load and then we can just go in, in, inside like alteralytics and we can just take the YOLO v5 small model and then we just set pre-trained equal to true. So we just use a pre-trained uh, uh, YOLO v5 model on the Coco dataset and then we're just going to return our model. Then we can set up some scores for our frame. So here we can, we can take a single frame as an input and then the score uh, scores like the frame using the YOLO v5 model. And then we're just going to return the labels and the coordinates of the object detected by the model in the frame. So we both have a score. We have like a confidence score for the bounding box uh, that we have found in the image. And we also have like the coordinates of that bounding box. And then we also have like what class are we actually like detecting inside of that uh, bounding box. Then we can actually like have a function for like converting a class to a label. We can also plot the boxes on an image. So we can actually like display the bounding boxes that we're detecting in our image. And then we're just going to have our call function here. So when we initialize our um, object detector here and we just call the object detection function, we can have this like um, awesome autonomously called function. Uh, so we're just going to define that here. We're going to open up a webcam. So this is the code here that is different from the other videos about my YOLO v5 model here on the channel. So now we're going to use the webcam instead of a YouTube uh, URL for doing like inference on. So here we're going to now open up our webcam with the capture. Then we're just going to have a while loop running through like as long as our webcam is open, we're just going to read in a new frame from a webcam. Then we're going to pass that frame into our score frame, which will actually just pass our image for our model. And then we'll get the results out here at the end. 
then we can just go in and use the other function that we just talked about with the plot boxes we just throw in the results that we got from our model and then we also throw in the frame sort of plot, plot boxes here and then we're just going to return a new frame here that we can then put some text on for example here we're going to count uh, the number of frames per second that we have so we're going to use the perf counter from uh, the time module so we just have a start time we have an end time and then we just calculate the number of frames per second that we get then we're just going to put uh, put the text here on top of the frame with the number of frames per second that we that we get and we also have the bounding boxes and also the classes with the confidence score and then we're just going to call cv2.imshow where we're just going to show the frame that we have done all the processing on and the detections on and here we just check if we had q on a keyboard we will go out of this while up here and terminate our program and then we're just going to like terminate our program um so this program here will run until we hit the q on our keyboard then down here at the bottom we're just going to initialize our object or like an instance of an object so we have our detection equal to update detection so this will be our the class that i just showed you and then when we call this detection function here it will actually like call this uh, call function inside of our class and then we're just going to run our live update detector with a pre-trained yolo v5 model you can actually like also go up here if you want to use another model you can lose like the you can use like the large model or like the nano model or stuff like that but here we're just going to run the program and see the actual like results that we get so now we actually like run the program here we can see that device used is the cpu so i don't have in, uh, CUDA installed here on my computer we can do another video about that to actually like show you that we can improve the performance by running this yolv 5 model on the gpu instead of the cpu but we can actually like see here that with an i7 um, um, chip here we can actually like get some okay performance we get around like three four frames per second i also have some other different kind of like programs running on my computer right now so i could uh, actually like get up to like six seven maybe eight frames per second if i was only running this program here on my computer and wasn't recording and stuff like that at the same time but here we can see like yolv 5 small model summary we have 213 uh, layers in our model we have like around um, 7 million parameters and we can see here with the gradients and stuff like that but here we can see the device used is the cpu we can get the number of frames per second we get the bounding boxes around the optics that we're detecting so right now we're detecting a couch in the background even though we can even see like a small part of the couch it still detects it we can see that we're detecting a chair and also a person we could also draw like the confidence score on top of these bounding boxes here um, and stuff like that but again we can just like detect arbitrary optics right now when we're just using a pre-trained model so we get all the classes from the Cocoa data set so this is really easy to get started with you can just go into my github i'll link to the description here you can grab the code run it on your own computer and then you can do a lot of different kind of like applications and projects uh, with this code you can also train your own custom yolo v5 model and in just uh, like implement it in in this code here as well i will just buy that on channel so definitely check those out we can just treat, see, try to see like some other different kind of objects here. We can see we detect a cop. So here we see we detect both like a cop remote here. So we could actually like set up some thresholds that if the detections or like if the confidence score of these objects here is lower than some threshold, we're not detecting it as an object. But here we can see that now it actually like detects it as a, as a cop. We can also try to like take up some sound classes here if we're able to actually like detect those. I'm not sure if those are actually like in the Cogent data set. I'm not sure those are because these are just like glasses so it doesn't act like detected sometimes it detects it as a remote that is not correct but we can actually see that it is capable of detecting different kind of objects here we can see it it keeps pretty good track of the person here and the couch in the background and right now we're only doing detections um a couple of days ago i released a video about like optic tracking how we can use viola v5 together with object tracking definitely check that video out it will improve your performance uh, by a lot it actually like, uses a Kalman filter to actually like, track these bounding boxes here from frame to frame you can assign an id to the person and then you can just keep track of that object in the scene but here we're just taking in an individual like a single image we pass it through our model we get the detection out and then we just do that uh, for every Im image that we get in from our webcam so it is way better to actually like, keep track of these different kind of like optics in the scene tracking around if they leave the camera like you will just like discard that uh, the tracking or like that detection and it can be useful a lot of different kind of things so definitely check that out as well this video here was just for you guys to like see that we can also do this yolv 5 model here live on a webcam and you can just go in and take my code run it on your own computer and do some like optimization to it you can try it out with a gpu you'll get way better performance when i ran this code here on my gpu i actually like got around like 30 to 40 frames per second so it's actually like 10 times faster to run it on the gpu 
But thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and bell notification on the video here. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial uh, where we're talking about like basic image operation from the beginning. How we can do camera calibration, stereo vision to get depth information in our images. Then we're combining that with point clouds, deep learning and so on. So it's a really cool tutorial. If you're interested in that tutorial and to learn more about computer vision, I'll link to it up here or else on the scene next to you guys. Bye for now.